Great to be with you again. I'd like to share with you some words that were written by uh, Bishop Robert Barron, who is an auxiliary bishop of Los Angeles. Many of you may know him from some of the videos that he has made explaining uh, the Catholic Church's teaching and history. Uh, he used to be a priest of the Chicago Archdiocese, and he's an alumnus of my seminary in Washington. He said these words really occasioned by the uh, protest against uh, St. Jennifer of Sarah, but widening to a, a deeper concern. He said, when I saw the videos of Sarah's statues being torn down, burned, spat upon, trampled, and desecrated in San Francisco and Los Angeles, I shuddered. Not only because such behavior was boorish and unjustified, but also because it called to mind very similar activities at earlier stages of American history. In the mid to late 19th century, anti-Catholicism was rampant in the U.S., due in part to prejudices inherited from Protestantism, but also due to the arrival of large groups of immigrants from Catholic countries who were considered inferior. A powerful political party, the Know-Nothings, was organized precisely around the theme of opposing Catholicism. <clears throat> and in many of the major cities of our country, Catholics, convents, parishes, cathedrals, statues, and churches were burned to the ground by unruly mobs. Moreover, in that same period, the Ku Klux Klan which was active not just in the South, but in many Northern cities as well, endeavored to terrorize blacks and Jews, of course, but also, it is easy to forget, they persecuted Catholics. If you doubt that this sort of knee-jerk opposition to Catholicism endured well into the 20th century, I would re recommend you consult some of the histrionic rhetoric used by the opponents of John F. Kennedy during the presidential campaign of 1960. So when I see mobs of people tearing down and desecrating statues of a great Catholic saint, canonized just five years ago by Pope Francis, how can I not see the ugly specter of anti-Catholicism raising its head? We are passing through a Jacobin moment in our cultural history, and such periods are dangerous indeed, for there is no clear indication of what can stop this momentum. One can only hope the cooler heads will prevail, and that responsible people might bring to an end this ridiculous and dangerous attempt to erase Padre Pio. Yes, it isn't just Padre Pio. I must say, I can remember the stories of George Washington when he first recognized some of the anti-Catholic feeling in his army, making it clear to all the soldiers, we'll have none of that. Whatever the Guy Fawkes celebrations that they had in England against Catholics, now Washington insisted that all in the army be treated with dignity. I think for some of us, it may almost be a case of forgetting what our grandparents went through when they came to this country. 
I know my mother's ancestors came from County Cork and County Kerry in Ireland around the 1850s, the time of the Great Pota Potato Famine. And we know the stories of how many Irish had to see signs, no Irish need apply, no Irish will be uh, hired. And when my father's father came from Poland about 1900 with his wife from Germany, he realized after a few years that if he would get enough work to do as he was in the roofing business, he needed to change his name from the Polish Ruszek to Russell. It would sound so much more American, English even. Yes, the feeling against the Catholic Church is not something in the far distant past. We have memories of it. I can even remember when I first went to look for my first summer job in Manhattan, my uncle telling me not to go to a certain very large corporation because as soon as they see I go to a Catholic school, they would never hire me. And yes, we've seen that anti-Catholic spirit, uh, spirit often when we would vacation in the southern states where Catholics were perhaps 1% of the population in the old days. Some of us can very vividly remember the anti-Catholic spirit that was manifested in the election of John Kennedy and even the more blunt and violent demonstrations when Alfred Smith had run for the presidency in the 1920s. Yes, it's something that seems to be always there. We're shocked even a few years ago when the senator from California questioned one of the proposed appointees to one of the judgeships in our nation and claiming that he's a member of that extremist group, the uh, Knights of Columbus, extremist. <laughs> yes, we pray for our nation at this time of great division when there's an awful lot of ugliness surfacing, that people will remain true to the finest traditions and ideals of our nation, to respect others no matter what, their color, their creed, their religious beliefs. We pray for our country in a very difficult time, that all may be faithful to the ideals of our nation. It's difficult at times not to react in anger to some of the things we experience. We can only pray for our nation. The Knights of Columbus have just sent me an email yesterday reminding us that there is a Catholic organization throughout the U.S. that is organizing uh, prayerful demonstrations this Saturday. And there will be a demonstration here in front of our church praying the rosary for the state police and all those who enforce the law. I hope many will be able to take part in that prayerful demonstration of our love and support for law enforcement in our society. We know very well, no society, no nation can exist when there is not respect for law enforcement. God bless you and your family and your loved ones and keep you safe. 